Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today with another Beyond the Mic episode. I've done this a few times before, most of the time, sadly, on bad or, or negative occasions for me in my life. But uh, today, I hope to have a little bit of good and a little bit of bad because it's just reality, unfortunately, as you'll see as we welcome in the new year. So I want to talk to you guys about some sentimental, personal stuff. And at the same time, I do want to give some fun stuff, my best of 2016. 16, and uh, also just sharing some, you know, some behind the scenes stuff with the community as well as my goals for 2017. So happy to have you guys along for the ride. So grab a coffee. How, how much more cheesy can this get, right? And uh, sit back, relax, and join me. So the first thing that I want to talk about is ah, depression and yeah, yeah, we're going to start on a real happy note, guys. Uh, we're going to start to talking about depression and you know how I've been dealing with it this last year. You guys know, I mean, 99% of you guys who are watching this right now know that I do YouTube. I also work full time as a mail carrier. My real name is Tim. Uh, go ahead and watch my first Beyond the Mic for a little bit of my backstory and my message, but things have changed a lot in those 10 months or so since I did that video. I remember when I did that video, you know, to put it in perspective, I had about 40,000 subscribers, I think, and now I'm, I'm close Closing in on 300k, but my message is still the same, and and a lot of what I said in that video really holds true in terms of what my overall goals are, and really what I'm trying to spread through my YouTube channel, even though it's an unorthodox way of doing so. Okay, so the negative. The negative is, man, I'm still bummed out, and this is just natural, I guess. But man. Uh, for a kid who grew up in such a perfect household with the with the ideal perfect life, right? I mean, uh, I had an autistic brother, and uh, besides that, you know, like, and that ended up being like a good thing in a weird way because you know you live with someone who's disabled uh, intellectually, physically, or developmentally, and you just get used to it and you learn to love them for who they are. So I don't look at it as a downside. I never did, uh, but you know, besides that being different than your average family, I had like a very loving and amazing mother and the same thing with my father and two brothers and I just had like a really nice life like middle class uh, lived in a very rural city I played outside like 24 7 I loved you know the usual stuff that kids love right then uh, about like a, a five years ago, everything took a total nosedive when I lost my mom very unexpectedly to, uh, to, to lung cancer. As a non-smoker, beautiful, amazing woman, only 48 years old. And I told that backstory, including my own health woes in that first Beyond the Mic episode. But then, you know, just as I was starting to kind of learn to live with those awful circumstances, this year, a few months ago, and you guys probably already know this, I mean, you guys have been everything to me, honestly, uh, but I lost my brother, tragically, unexpectedly, uh, you know, I don't want to, it's weird to get into specifics, because it feels like, I, I don't know, almost... I don't know, inappropriate, I guess, but but he had a seizure and he just had a he had his heart had a heart failure right after a grand mal seizure and that's that's how he passed away. Twenty nine years old, my brother, who was everything to me, especially after the loss of my mom. Like, I just can't articulate how he was my world. And the best way to describe Sean would be to be that he was like a 29 year old a man. He looked totally, you know, normal average guy, but inside he was probably like a six year old, you know, and that sounds kind of almost insulting, but it was also so endearing. And he was such a, an authentic individual because of that, you know, the type of guy who speaks his mind and who has his passions in life, you know, whether it be Disney movies or Sesame street or whatever, but we would always enjoy a sing along every car ride that we, uh, that we went on together but uh, so it's been so difficult getting over the loss of, of Sean and that's something that I feel so broken over you know it just I do these YouTube video I work every day then I get home and I do YouTube videos every day but always lingering there is 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 my brother and like what does it even matter anymore and, and am I doing any good in the world by making YouTube videos about mobile games like is that something that's gonna make a difference in this world like I don't know like what has become of myself you know in in a way I've been successful and in other ways it's just is this is this the impact that I can make on the world like not to be, speak too 
you know, not that I expect myself to be, you know, whatever, uh, Bill Gates, you know, but at the same time, you know, I'd like to do something more positive. So that's going to kind of roll into my New Year's resolution to try to tie in more positivity and more, you know, I don't know. It's it's tough not to preach when you want to put out a video or, or something that does a little good in the world. But at the same time, like I have to find a better way to tie in charitable efforts and helping others out who need it in the community. So that's going to be my big goal of 2017. But before we do get into those New Year's resolutions and all the good stuff, because uh, there is plenty of good stuff to share with you guys too. It's not going to be all, uh, you know, super sad. But it's my life, you know. It's it's just what it's reality for me, unfortunately. But uh, and I do, for some weird, weird reason, I have an easier time talking to you guys, you know, 10,000 plus people who, are, who will watch this video than I do my own friends or family. Like, what sense does that make? But I can talk here alone to the camera, uh, set up, <laughs> no doubt, on a, uh, the camera is set up on a Clash Royale uh, chest. But uh, yeah, so I can do that. But for whatever reason, I just can't talk to normal people. It's weird. But I do want to share something incredibly personal with you guys because I want to show you what my motivation is, what does get me through the day. And it's something a little bit strange because all it is is one card given to me by my mom uh, just a week before she went into a coma, before she passed away. And uh, totally an emotional thing. And I don't even know why I'm sharing with this with you guys, but hopefully it's to give some of you a little inspiration that no matter what you're going through in life, uh, you know, been dealt a pretty crappy hand, you know, pretty, pretty shitty last few years for me. But no matter what you're going through, you know, there can be sources of inspiration. So that's why I'm going to share this with you guys right now. So be right back. All right, guys. So here it is. It's this card has been my source of inspiration throughout the last five years and it's meant more to me after the loss of my brother and like i said this was a card that was given to be my by my mother on my birthday because she passed away two weeks after my birthday and uh this was the last thing that she ever ever gave to me as uh as you know something she wrote down or, or whatnot she like i said she went to a coma a few days afterwards so it says Live in the sunshine, uh, sorry, live in the sunshine, swim the sea, drink the wild air by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Just a simple quote, but you know, when you're going through something so tragic, something as little as this, a little quote on a card, holds so much more meaning, you know, I guess it's sentimentality, but it's just the truth. And inside, these are the words that really, you know, I'll read them to you, but these are the words that really... I don't know, this, this, this is what I live for, as weird as that sounds, but it says, enjoy the good life on your birthday. And then my mom wrote, and each and every day. Oh man, okay, uh, and each and every day. You are and always will be my precious son who has an amazing journey ahead, and I will always be there with you, right? So, uh, love mom. So, I'm not a religious or spiritual person, but I do think that I hopefully instill some of what was such an amazing woman in me. And it, this card's a blessing and a curse to some extent because it makes me feel that like, you know, when she says, when I have an amazing journey ahead of me, you know, sometimes I think, is that, is this what it is? Is it YouTube? You know, is that the journey or is it something bigger, you know? So that's why one of my big goals in, in 2017 is going to be to make this a journey and include as many of you guys as I possibly can, you know, because I'm here. I want to be here for you guys who might be going through something big or small in life. I want to be there for you like you guys as a community have been there for me. So that's going to be my, you know, it's not succinct. But that's going to be my overall goal for 2017, to help more of you guys out and to do more good in the world. You know, I listened to a podcast recently, and it was by uh, a Sam Harris podcast. I highly recommend it. It's called Waking Up, uh, if you're into, like, uh, philosophy and whatnot. But anyway, one podcast, he had somebody on who was like, uh, the, the premise of the conversation was, you know, we don't do nearly enough good for charity in the world. And it's hard to articulate this because it sounds like you're such on, on such a pedestal, right? Oh, we don't do enough. You need to give more to charity. 
But the truth is, is the guest on, I'll include a link to this a podcast if you're interested, but the guest on the podcast really made a compelling argument that it's almost morally unethical not to do good in the world if you can save a life for as little as $20 or $50. I forget what it is now, but I think the, the number one charity in the world is to fight malaria, you know, just bed nets in, in, uh, in the peripheral countries. And that can save a life for 50 bucks, you know? It's so, I mean, I tell you that to tell you that we can do more good in the world, you know? Uh, and I know I'm getting so deep here and, and, and you know, <laughs> I forgive me for doing so, but I just wanted to share that with you guys and maybe all of you guys can just do one little bit of extra good thing in the world and you know, you can kind of pay it forward. Forgive the uh, the cliches of course, but but I think that would definitely go a long way in making the world that can be quite a, quite a cold place at times a little bit of a better place. So getting into the rest of my New Year's resolutions, uh, basically it's gonna be health oriented. I've kind of let myself go. I'm like the fat guy who still goes to the gym three or four times a week right now, so I need to get better at eating healthy. I've fallen into quite the uh, unhealthy eating streak lately, so that's my personal resolution, and also, as I discussed earlier, I wanna build a studio, add face cam, and engage with you guys more, and do collabs with face cam, and just seeing that reaction and stuff should be a lot of fun. So those are my resolutions. I want to hear yours too, guys. So go ahead and put those below. Now let me get to my best of 2016. Now, just a disclaimer, not all these things were from 2016. So I'm kind of cheating. But these are things that I discovered in 2016. Movies, music, books, etc. That I just wanted to share with you guys. Maybe you can check them out if you're interested. So here's the list. Okay, so let's start with Clash moments. So in Clash of Clans, my favorite Clash moment from 2016 by far was Chicago Live. Chicago Live was so much fun. I got to meet Power Bang for the first time. I got to meet Jake, uh, One Hive Jake for the first time. Love both those guys. I got to meet so many awesome people. Got to hang out with Anna Moore from Supercell. And I got to meet you guys, so many of, uh, some, so many of the awesome Clash of Clans fans who came to the event. It was such, uh, such a blast, really. So that was my favorite Clash of Clans event in Clash Royale. My favorite event was actually the Crown Duel, which was the most recent one that I commentated with uh, with Rumham. That was a lot of fun. Uh, it was the first time I did something like that, a little bit out of my comfort zone. I usually don't stream, uh, so just casting uh, a bunch of matches for a couple hours like that was new and a little bit outside of, like again, outside of my comfort zone, but I had a lot of fun. But way more importantly, I get to meet so many cool people, especially afterwards. Uh, we had like a Clash Royale drinking game. We were all of age, we were all of age, uh, but it was a lot of fun and it was a lot of money too. <laughs> and uh, it was a blast. So shout out to all you guys. There was probably 10 of you, so I don't, I can't name you all right now at the top of my head, but I love you guys. Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so my other favorites. So I discovered a song that was probably a few years old, but one of my favorite songs of 2016 was a song called Seven Feathers with the, the number seven feathers by Nako and the Medicine People. I really love that song. It's just like, uh, I don't know, it just kind of hits my soul. It, I love the way that, that Nako uh, story tells. So that was my favorite song. Also, a close runner-up was One in a Million by Midnight to Monaco. Uh, just a catchy song. I kind of like it for whatever reason. It's kind of like an old school uh, house uh, electronic meets uh, alternative music pop, I guess. I don't know. But you Listen to it and see what you think. Uh, my favorite movie was actually from the end of 2015, but I'm gonna count it in 2016 anyway. And it was The Invitation. I was a big, I'm a big fan of kind of indie movies like Sundance type, uh, you know, the, those type of movies. So I love The Invitation. It's kind of creepy and in a cult, and it's cool. So check it out if you haven't. Let me know what you think. My favorite book was actually from like 30 years ago, but I just got around to reading it. I love true crime, so I finally read The Stranger Beside Me about Ted Bundy. Uh, by Anne Rule, and man, that book was amazing. I mean, it's dark and, and twisted, but it's good too. Check it out. So those are my favorites of 2016, guys. I'm interested. To, I'm interested to hear what your favorite moment of 2016 was. Share it with me in the comments. I'll be sure to respond to as many as I possibly can in this video in particular. So that's gonna do it, guys. That's gonna be it. I hope you enjoyed this kind of beyond the mic uh, follow-up video. I 
I do them every so often, I guess, and uh, just like to get stuff off my chest, I guess. So guys, thank you so much for all the support. Thanks to all of you, every single one of you who have been with me for one or two or even three years. It, it means the world to me. It really does. I can't, I can't tell you guys enough. Uh, thank you. So thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, here's to more great Clash memories inside and outside of Clash, I guess, of uh, both games in 2017. So guys, thanks so much for watching. And as always, take care, guys.